Now welcome to episode two of the new fish vlog and you join us today at Bishop's Bowl Fishery, somewhere totally different for us. Uh, I haven't been here for years but it's one of those places that is really good, it's really popular so we thought we'll come along, Mick's definitely never been here before, we'll come along somewhere different and somewhere that we know that you guys like to fish. So we're on Walworth Lake today and we've got loads to talk about, matches to catch up on, we've even got a sneaky new product to show you so without further ado let's get the kit finished, let's finish setting up the kit, get some fishing done. Rutilus, Rutilus, yeah. Barbellus, Barbellus. Are you, what are you doing, just giving us a bit of bit of Latin start the day, yeah? Why not? I feel a little bit uh, like a dictionary this morning. How are you doing? Wait till I start with the thesaurus. Me, I couldn't be better. Although I'm a bit cold, because. Uh, it's 1st of June today. No, no, can't be. 1st of March. Don't feel like the 1st of June. It's freezing, it was 10 degrees driving down here. Which, considered it was 25, I think, last Saturday. What we on? Thursday. Um, unbelievable. unbelievable. Typical UK weather. Um, freezing cold. However, it doesn't stop us, does it? Because we're out and I put my jumper on and yeah. I've got wrapped up and I can't wait to get fishing. So I'll just chopping some worms before... Yeah, uh, it's in this. Obviously, uh, uh, we'll talk I've, about what I'm doing in a minute. And I'm saying it's a few because I've not got a lot because I picked up um, a bit of a remnant of... I've well, been using, yeah, I got a full bag, but I didn't bring that, and I didn't think I'd need them, but, you know. So um, what, um, Sean you never has know. told us about this venue, about this lake. Yep. Sounds like there's not many carp in it. No, which is superb. Yeah. Uh, I'm not I arms pulled up, fancied it? to catch in a few carp, I've got to be honest, but... Oh, did you? Sorry. I, well, I did, but, right. but it's going to be good anyway, because we're going to catch some skimmers, aren't we, I think? We're going to catch a bit of everything. Um, is that, what, so what have you gone for here? Well, I would just, I've got some casters, um... Sean's recommendation. I've only got them. That's what I've got. Because he sorted me out. Because I brought pellets. Um, mm. And um, and, and, a few, a and a few worms. And a bit of ground bait. And a few dead maggots. Because that catches everything, doesn't it? Um, so I've opened it in a corn. I've actually got a great tub full of... Ooh, I've got um, great tub full. Expanders. Big expanders. Because they're going to catch me some skimmers and some bream and some tench. Uh, and whatever else. And if there is a carp, I'll catch one at all on that. Bit of corn, few pellets. Just have a look at your, your swim here. You've got, and worms. you've got a bit of a reedy island between us. I tell you what this is, it's beautiful isn't it? Got nice open water. I think that's a bit of a ridgy type thing that runs between me and you. Bit of a sunk, it, sunken island. Isn't yeah it? it slopes off and slopes up. So what I've got is I've got a swim down edge which I've put on a um, nice sturdy wherever he is. Here he is. Um, it's about three and a half foot. Three foot eight and a half. Well, look at that. Um, Proper fish is rolling in your swim then. I've put a few casters there already. And I've plumbed him up down there, down uh, Reedy Bay. Yeah. And I've took the same rig and took him off the island because I'm a bit lazy. I didn't want two rigs. Yeah, why would so you? I can drop him in here, stick some more sections, and drop him in there. And I'm going to fish corn on the hook or probably some of them expanders. Fury. And then uh, that's a fury, yeah. So I can see tip and I can see old wobbles and whatnot. And then I've just stuck a, a 414s Cypress. I've got from 414 Cypress, you know. Well, great mice think alike. Um, we're a semi positive rig. Which I'm going to fish at, I think it's top kit and three. Just enough so I can throw it, but I can pot it in as well. Is that a bit wormy there? That's deepy, deep water, worms. Worms are just a little bit on top of my casters. Uh, I'm going to put an odd pellet, drip an odd bit of corn in, get that started, and hopefully build it to a beautiful crescendo. <laughs> but that's not really. Um, we're just here to catch You'll a few fish. Have a nice day, aren't we? Amongst the chat at the beautiful. Bishop's Pole. Bishop's Pole fishery. And it is, Bishop, it is beautiful. And it's so different here, isn't it? Because it's rugged, isn't it? Because it's an old quarry. It's a massive... I mean, you've not even seen the best bit. No, yet. no, I've come I've but come it... in there. I've managed to get a cup of tea from Sean. Yep. Lovely, nice cup of tea. Nice cup of tea. And um, I've only had a bit of a glimpse because we want to get uh, this done, don't we? Yeah. And have his little chat. And then we'll probably have a, bit of, have a bit of a walk around and a bit of a look at it later. But from what I've seen, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's a massive site. Old Loads of different works. lakes. Yeah, um, and you can see it with the water cool, can't you? I've, yeah, everything's clear. The mud's clear, uh, you know, grey, and the water's got that tinge to it. I've obviously mixed a bit of stuff that's come out of here at some stage, but you know, when I used to throw a shovel around and things like that. Um, so I can't wait to get started. Yeah. Joe. We've even got a new product to show everyone, haven't we today? Uh, yeah, we're going to we're going to slide one in. We're aren't slide we? one in, yeah. Um, we'll show you that in a bit, which is nice. Should we get some fish caught. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Mick, do you know what the most important thing to do today is? You need Start a as we mean to go on. You need a flask. <laughs> Shall I tell you about what I'm going to do, Mick? 
Shall I tell you about how I'm going to fish? Yes. Tell, Joe, enough about me. Tell me about you. <laughs> enough about me. Well, I'm on peg 13 for anyone who knows Walworths. Don't know if that's a good peg or a bad peg. And what I've done, I've mixed up some thatchers. Nice ground bait, isn't it? And I've just put one third thatchers, two thirds micros, and I'm going to feed in open water tiny little nuggets of that mix and fish an expander over it. That sounds skimmery to me, Mick, do you? It sounds like you've gone straight down the middle of the road there and covered your back and... Yep. Yeah. And then I'm going to fish hard pellets up against the island because, although there aren't many carp in here, I do fancy my chances of catching one or two. Just can't help yourself, can you? Can't help myself. I wonder why you'd walk past this peg. Well, it's obvious this is the carp peg, isn't it? Obvious. It's obvious for anyone who's looking. So yeah, I'm just going to rattle a few fours. I've got a lovely marker there because there's a, like a post on the other side. And we'll rattle a few fours in there and see what happens. Might catch some, might not. If I lean out, I can just see your float there. Look, that's just great. They're good for seeing them furies, aren't they? Oh, I. So, Mick, while we're waiting for some action, where have you been doing it? Oh, now then. Um, so, I think I were in the middle of a Southfield campaign last time we spoke. Yeah, you just you just conquered Ferry, hadn't you? Yeah, yeah, and then I'd been to... Full enough, that must have been a Thursday, last time we sat down and chatted. It's the throwback Thursday job. And, um, Thursday. and I'd been to Southfield, and I'd been fortunate enough to uh, won a little um, midweeker, 40 odd pegger, and that was the start of the little uh, spring Southfield campaign which were all really about the Sona Bates Super League, Feeding Master Super League. The team event? Yeah, the teams of four. Uh, we had to get ready for that, so trying to put a bit of time in, fishing the opens, but also in the middle of all that, which is dead convenient, is uh, the New Fish Feeder King competition. And so I think the following weekend after we'd, um, and so I got a free weekend that weekend, due to qualifying for Feeder Masters, and I took time out to sort a bit of kit out, go through my stuff um, and catch up really. And I went to Southfield the following uh, the following week on Get a Feeder bike. King. And I think I'd said to you last time, it had just, just started to fish where you were getting bites from all sizes of fish, so skimmers were feeding, bream were feeding, and it had turned into its lovely spring mode um, where you weren't just fishing for an odd bream, you were fishing for a bit of everything. And sure enough, uh, the following Wednesday, Feeder King Qualifier, I think that was Qualifier 2. Um, I drew, I'd been on there drawn 16, blanks, previous one, it's every fortnight. Then I went that following Wednesday after we last got together and I drew peg 70, which is the end peg. Sounds great, and it's feast or famine. It's probably the best and worst end peg along with peg 11 on there. Bream venues are great, but the two end pegs on there go against like the bank, um, like the dam yeah, so is that like, the, at the end ends. of the reservoir then? Sorry? Is that like uh, right at the end of the reservoir? Is yeah, it? that's the, as far as you can go, down the east bank. And um, it's almost like got two dam heads south. In fact, it's got three because it's actually above ground level, it's south field. So the, the canal level is all above ground level a um, bit of Dutch engineering, I think. And uh, that that particular MPEG can be great if the wind's blowing down there, but not too strong, because then it creates undertow and pushes the fish back two or three pegs. Anyway, I've drawn this peg, and it's a tough zone, is that? The, th the zone C, if you like. And I, and I have fancied it. I thought, I've got a right chance today. Well, I've got a bite, mate. I've got a bite. Are you in? My, my ease myself in worm and caster approach is not easing itself in at all really. Jimmy Rimmer. Um, I've had an indication. Is that on pellets, Joe? Hard pellets, yeah. Straight in, good lad. Well, I've put soft pellets in on my other two lines, so we'll see, won't we? Um, so I thought, yeah, great, I've got, a, got half a chance. Gentle breeze going down there, and if it fishes hard, then it's anybody's zone that, but if it fishes well, I thought, I've got as good a chance as anybody. And in fact, slightly better chance than anybody. 
Good long story short, I've had a great day's fishing. I've had 23 pounds some. Um, but it, it was a bit slow getting going. They were not bringing caught further up the zone, 20 peg zone. And it fished its absolute brains out, uh, is the truth. Because it Southfield's been fishing ever so well, hasn't it? it? Well, that was, I think, the match that we talked about last time was the start of it. It continued. That day, I had 23-odd, won me five-peg section. He pays every five pegs. Brilliant organisation there. Um, but miles off, winning the zone, £37. Pound. Paul Lancaster and I think Jason Law, who also had £37, but just a little bit less. They won the 20-peg zone and went through. Um, they were £40-odd. Pound. It fished brilliant. In fact, I think that day, every single section was won with £20 or more. And that's every five pegs. Yeah. So that gives you some idea how well it fished. Which is unbelievable for Southfield, isn't it? Yeah, but that's, that's the, if, I suppose, the attraction of it. Um, I think I said before that it's a venue where I think anybody can win because it's unpredictable. Um, you don't know where the winner's going to come from before the start. Because it's shallow, the fish roam around, they settle where they want to settle. Um, you know, it's not, there's no real holding pegs they can't it's not a bit deeper here or it's got a different sort of bottom there it's just a big flat playing field um bottom style all three or four foot deep so it, it, fishing great brilliant it was and uh, i thought yeah br sound enjoyed that um went and did a bit of filming with you that's what i've been up to and then i think i've had another weekend off because as i said i got a bit of freedom did a bit of kit, got a lot coming on, a lot going off, so I wanted to get that right. And then that Friday, um, leading up to the following week, um, was, that was, no, I've, I've actually got my dates mixed up. That particular weekend was the Super League. I think it was, um, yeah. It was, yeah, of course it was. And um, so I'm like, yeah, great. Um, I'd won my section, Lee had caught a load of fish at the other end. Uh, we were happy. Will Freeman came up. We had a chuck on the Friday, because obviously Will wanted to have a bit of chuck on there, couldn't get, didn't get no tickets for Feeder King, so uh, we had a bit of a, a feel for it. It was blowing a gale, we caught fish on every line, it was solid. Forecasts were a bit poor for the next day, Super League, dead confident, know what we're doing, team knows what they're doing, um, Bud, Lee, Will, myself. Venue was absolutely flat calm. It was red hot. That was the start of that little hot spell we had in May, wasn't oh, it? Oh, did, did it? It come red hot. Red and, hot. Um, well, what can I say? All I can say is that Southfield is exactly why people get frustrated with it, because I basically didn't catch out. I caught seven skimmers for not a lot. I remember what I had. Seven pound? And so you've fished. had a little spell of catching 20 odd pounds and doing really well and then even you have a bad day. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's how daft it is. Will Will drew in end, in end zone peg 65, not far from where I've been three days previous. I were on 57, if I get that right, 57 or 54, which is where I'd won the midweeker a uh, week before. Oh, well, I went first to catch a fish, I got one first dob. Oh, I've had a rod, so that's what you get for fishing worm. Um, I had a skimmer first chuck, I had one second chuck. In fact, I got four skimmers, and I think one was next best in my 15 peg section. And I thought, yeah, brilliant. Dropped on the other line, caught a skimmer there. Yeah, it works, I know what I'm doing here. Brilliant. And then it went a bit hard, and it was rock hard for everybody. Of course, a very long story short, I've gone through the motions, but what I did, what I now know was wrong, is I pulled back. Because it was flat, it weren't towing. I thought this was going to be hard. Pull back a bit on the bait. So as not to finish up feeding too much. Because I thought if I'm fishing for 10 or 12 pounds, I don't want to put too much bait in. Massive mistake. Because so you went negative when? I went negative. And, excuse me, bear in mind that I'd fished positively. But... A little bit of an insight into that, and this is brilliant sort of match fishing skills, if you like, or... Um, experience. Knowledge, experience, yeah. So, 
I don't, I'm not going to blame anything apart from myself because you, you, there's only you can fish your own peg. But as a team, we're very conscious that you don't want to um, go gungo. You're not, you're not just letting yourself down. You're letting your teammates down. And if I'm honest, we kind of we're all a little bit careful. Don't blow it up. Don't put too much bait in, lads, because we've fell foul of that before on there. And there's a saying that you can know a venue too well, and I think that probably was the case. We've been a bit too smart, as Will put it. And we're all on the WhatsApp group, we're all talking to each other. Listen, lads, it's rock hard. Me and Lee had a great start, and it backed off. Um, I'd drawn, funnily enough, between Danny Wilson, one of our lads, and Wayne Bartholomew, captain of New Fish North. So I thought, well, they're a good guide. I know the lads well, I know how they fish. And it was a real limp along day. But Wayne, who uh, to my left, Rob Wharton to his other to the other side of him, who were also obviously amazing fishermen, um, we all know Rob. And you're using them anglers as a gauge. And top and bottom of it, Wayne just plodded on and built a weight and built a weight and basically finished up with 15 pounds. He had two or three big fish and ten skimmers. And he'd fished quite positively, but chucked in with plenty of bait and sat and waited. Waited for his bite, bore them on if you like. Um, Rob had two bites, sorry, and one on last chuck, so he had two bream and a skimmer, nine pound odd. That put Rob, I think, seventh. I finished up 12th, which is ridiculous really, and a really bad performance. Uh, really annoyed. Um, Will had a bad one. Buckwold had a bad and Lee were fourth, as he does, um, you know, got, got his points. So we absolutely bombed out, ridiculous, which, as you said, catching loads of fish, sitting down, catching 20 odd pound. But that's that's match fishing and you make the wrong decisions, you get the you get the wrong result, basically. Uh, and if you could rewind it all and do it all again, it'd be dead easy. But you don't, that's not what happens. So. That will happen, mm, frustrating. That was a that was disappointing Saturday. start then, really disappointing. Yeah, mega, because it's a bad start to the league, and I'm, we finished up with 40 points. It were a high scoring round, um, 18 points won it, um, 21 points were second. So we were like, oh, that could be, well, it definitely ruined it. We, I don't think, well, I'm pretty certain we can't win it. Um, but all of a sudden, then you're laughing because you're going, well, top 10 qualify for final, we better get his finger out. Um, you'd like to think that you could pull, pull a lot of that back, but you never know. Yeah, so all of a sudden you, your goals have changed. Yeah, you, you, you need your snookers and then you've got to go into your next matches all obviously with a different, um, a different attitude because you're not maintaining your place, you're trying to climb. So that was that and it, really frustrating. For a couple of days I stewed on it um, and it, I now know it was because I pulled back on the bait, should have been more aggressive, etc, etc. So we fished out that with a Saturday. The following Wednesday, um, we get this right. I've probably got my dates all mixed up here, but cut long so story it, short, I've been on a, then on a feeder king. Um, next qualifier. And I've drawn, where did I draw? 50, I'm back in 50s. And um, it's not particularly windy, loads of warm weather. I've used the same mix, um, which is Sonobet's 50-50 green, the method and paste green. Yeah, you love that ground bed, don't you? I love it, yeah. And um, wasp my worms up, chopped them all up, fished away, how I should have fished, uh, and I'd done previously. I've had 29 pound 10. Basically, I've caught, I've fished three lines, one at 20, one at 35, and one at 55 rotated my lines, 35 metre line were by far the best, but by rotating your lines, just made that line better in the middle. I weighed 29 pound, 10, and qualified for no fish feeder king final, which obviously I'm over so the moon about. feeder masters and feeder king? Yeah, two, my- Can I just make you aware that I'm actually shanking skins here? Yeah, you're doing really well there, and I'm uh, arsing around in the middle of the lake here. Catch it, I'm gonna have a cup of tea just to celebrate. Um, and um, yeah, feeder king and feeder masters, two, well, the two biggest 
And you got them all in two vlogs. Feed of fishing finals. Yeah, it's going well, this uh, vlog thing. Look I, at I him, think mate. you must have known. Um, They're a nice stamp, aren't they? Oh, no, no. He's lovely. The, uh, yeah, and I've got them under my belt, which is which is brilliant. Um, quali that were qualifier three, so there must be something going off because it were third qualifier on Feeder Masters and third qualifier on Feeder King. And we're in the final. That's um, in October, beginning of October. Uh, 10 grand to winner of that. But more importantly, uh, the new fish Frieda King title and beautiful trophy, which Lee's won twice, um, Jordan's won it, Neil Mallison and Steve Ringer. So that's one that you want to put on your mantelpiece for sure. Brilliant, uh, loved it. Love Southfield because there's been a lot know, of bites on there this you year. You never know they? what you're going to get. Uh, and there's been loads of bites at the minute, it's great. Can't wait to go back. But we've had other things to do. So the next goal was the next round of the Feeder Masters Super League, the Son of Bates Super League, and that's at Barston. So met up with Will, went down there for a chuck. Um, I think that were absolutely baking hot, and I mean flat and hot, plenty of people on. I think there'd been a match the day before, because it were a Tuesday, had a bit of match on Monday. Massive weights, slapping, tapping, pellet Yeah, they've been away. catching a lot of carp shallow, haven't they? Shallow fishing, yeah, all fish were up. Um, which is amazing, such a shallow venue, they're still, they're still on top. Um, there's not a lot of difference between top and bottom, but they're all on top. Which made it hard, but had a great day's fishing, probably caught 10 or 12 massive carp, but skimmers were hard to catch. And it kind of painted a picture to what it was going to be. Um, so off we trots, and uh, we went down there. I think in between there we've done a couple of days filming as well, Joe, haven't we? We've been um, to a which, local... Um, I've got to say, we didn't do any practising for you that, that week, which I'm, I'm ever so sorry about. What's that, sorry? We didn't do a bar some practice, did we? <laughs> no, no, um, I got uh, I got outvoted there. Normally we like to use, what do we call it? Feature Friday was the nickname that I used to Feature get when, when Frankie were on it. Um, we normally sneak down, pretend we're working. I don't know who we're trying to convince because there's only us two that uh, that we've got to explain ourselves to. But we didn't get it, we didn't manage to squeeze it into the calendar. But we didn't get down. But I went down with Will, and we had a great day, um, and learnt a bit. With we, we thought it were all method pellets. You got to uh, spot a bit, attract some fish in, because it gets a lot of gets a lot of action. Does Barston? It's a fantastic fishery. Absolutely stuffed with carp. Uh, but when it's flat, they're a bit tricky, which is a perfect sort of tee-up to tell you what happened on the match. But me and you went filming in between. Off we went to a local club water. We were doing a smashing film, which will be coming out soon. Do you know what? I want to quickly talk about that, because I think I said I did a bit of a Facebook post about it, because there's not many places I haven't filmed that, really. No. Uh, uh, that's, you know... On the mainstream venues, I've been to them all, so it's nice when you get a genuine surprise. And that Ravenfield for me was a genuine surprise. I was blown away by it. It was so nice, and it was just nice to see something different. Loads yep. of tents, crewies, skimmers, beautiful scenery, just ace. <laughs> you liked it, didn't you? Oh, it just ace. I can't wait for the video for that one because I think people will like be like, bloody hell, I can't, can't believe that's in Rotherham. <laughs> No, no, it's um, it's a bit of an hidden gem. I think it's it's um, South Yorkshire's best kept secret, if you ask me. And I'm guilty, and I, and I probably put that across in when we, there's a fishing video with um, that we've done. That I've just not been there enough, and it's it literally is down the hill from where I live. Uh, oh, it's yeah, literally down the hill from your house, isn't it? Yeah, you could take your handbrake off, and you're there. Yeah. And that, that was a great day out, weren't it? That was that was superb. Yeah, just nice to go somewhere different that I'd never even heard of. Which, when you know you've been doing features and whatnot for over ten years, is, is a, a nice treat. And I'm hoping that it triggers. Oh, I lost him. I'm hoping it triggers um, a load of other clubs to get in touch to say, which a lot have. I've got to be honest. Yeah. Plenty have been in touch, but we want more guys to 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 let us know where you guys go fishing and. Yeah, because hidden gems are what we're after. There's a lot of well-trodden paths, Joe. And this is one, to be fair. Like, yeah, this, is, this isn't a, a hidden gem as such, but it's. 
I, you know, I've never been. Not a mainstream sort of no, bath I'm... or glebe or whatever, but it's a beautiful place that is incredibly popular. Well, there were loads of people here this morning, weren't there? All having a brew and a breakfast, yeah, yeah. and there's a, uh, I'm going to say there's a over 50s match or whatever you want to call it this morning. They were all in there having the brekkie. Pleasure anglers coming and going all the time. Carpers are behind us, aren't they, on the mighty lake? Yeah. Everything you want. It, there's millions of these waters, isn't there? And we want to find them, don't we? Of course we do. I like to see different places. It broadens your uh, fishing knowledge, broadens your horizons. You get to do different things that... Because I have noticed in myself that you plough the same furrow because you go to your... You go to Southfield, you go to Barston. We spent a lot of time on Trent last year, Ferry Meadows, all the feeder venues. Um, and the fishing's very similar. And you do get into a bit of a, not into a rut, but it's quite narrow. Well, there's, what is it, however many rod license sales, close to a million, for example. And there's 60 people at Ferry Meadows. Yeah. So there's a lot of people that we're not, Seeing, isn't they? <laughs> well, they're going somewhere, aren't they? They're going it, somewhere. It's places like here, Bishop's Bowl, clearly, where people are quite happy. You know, it's it's on some day, it's on somebody's doorstep, isn't it? Of course, uh, it. Had a nice run down this morning. Although it's a bit cold, we've we've got tucked away here out at wind because that's the beauty of places like this, where it's not just a length of canal or he's got. I, I don't even know how many ponds here. There's tons, isn't there? Oh, loads, loads of water. And it. that means that. Whatever you want, you can get your wind back to wind, or you can get sun, or you can get some shade, you can do whatever you want, pick your depth, pick your style, fish against some reeds, open water, whatever you want to do, and it is brilliant. I'll tell you what, Mick. Although... Oh, you'll never guess what I beat you to. Although you've got to make right choices, because obviously you are getting one to chuck on our Mick, belly. Mick, Mick, Mick. Have you got one? Look at him. Oh, ah. Look at him. Beautiful crewy, look at him. That is a nice crew. It's like a dinner plate. I like him. You don't see many of them. Yeah, I think he's took me up here on this peg. So I'm he's, feeding. I said him walk straight past this peg and jump on that peg 13. He knows, doesn't he? It's all right. Joe lives around the corner. I'm miles away. Here, let me take your fishing mate. You sit there, kid. You'll be all right as a good blocker. Well, you know. <laughs> So, so yeah, so that that was a, and I'm, like I say, I'm hoping that plenty more clubs come forward. So if you do have somewhere that you want us to shine a light on, a club, it can be, it doesn't have to be a fishery, it can be a club. Um, yeah. We'd love to go there and film if uh, if it's something that, that really tickles our fancy, really. We want to know about it, George. We want to know. I might have got him and all. Hey up. Hey up. What we got here? Oh. Feisty skimmer. Skimmer. Oh, nobody. Skimmer up against the island. Look at him, he's brand new he is. Nobody likes to see that. Mick, Mick, last month we told everyone about the uh, fantastic new Sonya Bates products. Yeah, yeah, we uh, sent a lovely box of goodies, didn't they? Uh, and I've really took to that new sweet fish meal. It's gorgeous. But I think, I think we've earned the right to tell everyone about our new new fish product, didn't we? Why not? Why not? Should we have a look? Yeah, yeah. Look at this. So, we've got these little beauties. Yeah, I'll show you the full box look, because that's how you'll see them when they're in your shop, on your shop counter. And these are the new fish, kit marker yellow and kit marker black. So, as the name suggests, it's for marking up your top kits. Are we going to have a, a little demo? Yeah, why not? Let me show you. Cheapest chips? Here's one I did earlier. Aren't they? £1.50. £1.50. Cheap, cheaper than chips. Yeah, no, they actually are. I'm just fishing just off deck at the minute, look, because I marked that one up earlier. So, everybody's like, what do you mark your pole with? 
Well, I've got top kits. In fact, here's one look that's full of white Tipex, uh -huh. which is a bit of a nightmare and not probably not particularly great for your carbon. So these little beauties, just make yourself a nice little yellow mark like that. And then when you want to remove it, I've got my little towel here, a bit of mum spit, a bit of polish, like that look, and that will rub off. Easy on, easy off. Easy on, easy off. But it'll stay on, waterproof. And because obviously there's a lovely trend these days to fish on the grey kits. The grey kits. There's a black one. It's no coincidence, Joe, that yellow shows up lovely on black kits and black clearly. And there you go, look, and that'll just mark you. In fact, we can just even write your name there, look. Thanks for that. Yeah, no problem. Well, it's your top kit, isn't it, that, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we've got a black one for the white kits and a yellow one for these, which is a bit sad, but they're no fish colours. Didn't do that on purpose, honestly. Well, it's not nothing sad about that. Yeah, and, and they're going to be out soon, um, probably <laughs> within the next month or so, heading to shops near you. Yeah, so they're going to be on a lovely little countertop this way. Yep. So in your, if your uh, local shop stocks them, yep. chooses to stock them, which I think they probably should, that will be sat there on the market. £1. And they're, they're in the complete opposite ratio to pole floats, where there's always seven red tips and three yellow tips. Well, these are seven yellows and three black, because we think... That's about the right ratio for people to uh, get the right colour for their top kit. Brilliant. Great little product. Superb. So you've done your due diligence. Du due diligence. And you've been to done your practice at Barston. Yep. So you're all up, up and running. Yeah. Talk yeah. me through the day. Well, it, you know, we felt like it were... Conditions obviously could be tricky for skimmers. Red hot, flat. But you know that, and you know that when it's like that, you've just got to accept that and it's a, it's, you might it's not a funny time of year for skimmers, this, isn't it? Is what, sorry? It's a, it's a funny time of year for skimmers. Yeah, yeah, they, they're all obviously spawning, and they just go a bit iffy, don't they? Um, Very iffy in your carp, sense today. Carp, we're definitely talking about spawning, and the way to catch them, we're obviously shallow. So, but you can't do that with feeders, so you've got to try and find a way to do it. And I suppose the main armoury, and I think this went for most people, which is a um, really important part of the story, to say that most people have got a bucket full of eight mils and six mils and oiled them up um, for a bit of attraction. Braid direct on a feeding rod with a big feeder. And the idea is you start on a method and basically you're trying to track fish, um, putting bait in, eventually they'll get their head down. Trouble is, when it's flat, they don't, they just swim about. And after an hour, so I've, sorry, the, probably the bit I need to explain is I've drawn, I've drawn peg 32, which is That's just on, off the island. Yeah. On the riverbank. Um, That's one of those pegs that has a throw up every two years, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, when it's good, it wins. It's a bit like the MPEG at Southfield. When it's good, and the old fish are there. Um, and I thought, well, it, they had been there. They'd, uh, they'd been around that area previously. And it usually is spring when, they, you know, as soon as it warms up, because it's shallow water, they can, it's even shallower there than it is around the rest of the lake. And they congregate around there. But when I got to my peg, it weren't particularly lively fish. They weren't many fish moving tight up to island. But I thought, well, we'll see how we go on. Um, Bud had drawn 54, just round the corner, deep water, and he got, there you've got options because it's deep close in. Then we've got Westy, who was studying for Lee. I hope I just had my laggy pulled out. Joe, I'm not going to lie to you, that... Did that pull my, you out, my, my brain and my float couldn't quite keep up with each other. So my elastic did the work for me. I just popped a bit of corn on there. That's a... Uh, that's a lovely skimmer. A pound and a half. A bit of corn. Um, West Deal was studying for Lee Drew. Where did he draw? 101. So he was in the top end of that section. And then Will Freeman drew peg 123. And everybody that knows Barston knows that peg 124 
is the MPEG and can be just a domineering all out the peg blah 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 but one, one two, two three, three is a nice one isn't it yeah one two three is known has been known to catch a lot of fish and don't ask me why and all, and all them pegs just there but more often than not you expect a good ending but it's the right end of the section because it's a team match course and everybody else is going to struggle to keep up with will because even if he comes second to one two four if you had four seconds, you've got eight points, which is which is brilliant. Amazing. Exactly. So after an, we're an hour in, I've got one carp, one skimmer. It's quite clear it's fishing hard. There were a few people milling about. Jordan Scott comes down, what's happening? Uh, Matt Wright, top at section peg 12 has got two carp. Steve Ring has got two carp. Darren Cox has got one carp. And it, we're just fishing tough, basically. But what I'm hearing is that West is uh, messaged me on the thing and I said, what's happening? He said, Adam Wakelin's set off out at traps. Um, two carp, two F1s. And he said, he's, he's spotting like mad. Of course, you, then you start asking a few questions. Turns out that Rob Wooten, who's on opposite him in the 40s, opposite Adam, um, is also doing the same. And he's domineering his area. And Phil Ringer's doing the same. So quite clearly, Ringer Bates team have got they know they know they've the got craft. a trick up the sleeve, haven't they? I've, oh yeah, and they're out at starting blocks and they're away. Um, so sort of trying to pull, pick a few brains. What's happening? They're spotting ground baiting or some t you know some kind of bait like that, not pellets like everybody else is trying to do. And cut long story short, it would turn out that what they've done is they've they've clouded up the water because the fish are on the surface probably a bit of oil a bit of a milky mix that they've used um to hold these carp that are cruising round because they're not going down to the bottom and feeding yeah they're just cruising round so they had to you had to hold them and then catch them um i've clouded up my peg with, with ground bait i had some match method mix that i'd mixed up to to um in case you need a change on your feeder, sometimes it works, and I use it for my skimmers. So I put a bit of that in, added a bit of oil that I had on me in my bag, and I've caught one, 15 pound, I would say, um, which were a lovely lump, but it just weren't happening. And so the story went on, and pretty much it was that, right the way through the match, um, I'm hearing that Bud were doing well, uh, West has had all his fish took off him by Adam. Um, Adam's dominated the area around him. So has Rob. He's had Nick Speedo, obviously, we all know, brilliant on a method, understands it really well. I think Rob's had a 14th and a 12th either side of him. Adam's had a 10th and a 14th either side of him. Phil's dominated his section. I think they were 7th and 10th either side of his second. I don't like He's to swear, but they've just absolutely took the mick, is what they're saying. They've just they've took the pee out of the match, haven't they? Oh, dominated it. Dominated Absolutely it. Absolutely. Took the mickey. Yeah, took the pee. Uh, which is brilliant because this is how I, you know, felt about it. I didn't even have that in my armoury. You know, don't... So that, I'm going to say that it were a bit of a specimen slant on things. Yeah, definitely. Bit of spotting. You know, we try, try, and, try and normally put pellets in. And they just knew. They knew about it which is brilliant. They had a bucket of pellets on one side and a bucket of milky slop on the other. And if the fish wanted to go down, they put some pellets in. If they want to stay on the top, they put this attractant in. 10 out of 10, top draw, brilliant fishing. Is it one of them where you just got to hold your hands up and say, Tactical genius. Yeah, hats off, um, hats off to them. Dominated the uh, round. They finished up on eight points. Steve won the top end of our section. Uh, he said wind turned round for him and fish rocked up. Him and Shemek, who we mentioned last time, were first and second. Darren Cox were third, who also, I believe, uh, fished a similar tactic. He had 59 pound. Wayne uh, was up there with them in the teens. He had 43 pound. I had 42 for fifth, which, you know, you could have come first or last off that peg, so, not saying I'm happy with fifth because you shouldn't be, but uh, I knocked a fifth in. And then Bud was 
unfortunately seventh. He had sixty fifty four pound, seventy one won his section, and that was a real tight section. So the size of the fish uh, absolutely made a massive difference on what they caught there and what they where they finished. Um, Westy had a nightmare over there, as I said, he was never going to catch a cart while he got Adam taking him off him basically. Fair play, uh, finished 14th and Will took the match clean out with 155 pounds. <laughs> yeah, go on Will. Um, proving that when there were a few fish about and they wanted to feed, what we had going were right. Um, method feeder, fish for carp, um, yellow band them on. Is that the colour, was it yellow? Seems to be. Yellow and pink seems to be the colour there. Um, don't ask me why, um, but that's but that's how it is. And he had, I think, 18 fish or something like that. A um, few F1s, 18 carp, a few F1s, an odd bream. Had a great day, £155. But the combined points just weren't enough. And... Um, we're not doing so well, is the truth. So another tough day at the office team wise. Yeah, it? yeah. So real mixed real mixed bag. That was that was this Saturday just gone. Um, bank holiday, took the weekend off. I'm getting ready for things that are coming up. So my next jaunt is um Tamar. That's the ever impressive Tamar. Yeah, West Fest, which is a four day festival. There's a feeder masters qualifier on the Sunday. Fortunately, I don't have to be there uh, for that, but I will be wandering around. Will's fishing that, stopping away with Will. Will that be a day imbued on the beer then? Um, well, the no, gin, because it, in your wife's sake, Frankie, gentleman jelly. He's coming down in van, um, and he's fishing the qualifier. Unless he gets his finger out and qualifies at Carmel this weekend, so he needs to get his finger out. Um, and then Will's travelling down on the Saturday with his family and he's fishing the qualifier. So, unless her indoors wants to come out and have 12 pounds around build, which I'm sure she don't want to do, I might as well just go and watch the fishing and try and learn a bit. Practicing on the cheap. Practice on the cheap, yeah, now wrong with that. A Paul Newell saying. Um, don't like doing it. But, yeah, I don't know. What about a mint chop chip ice cream down below? That could be a day, couldn't it? I was going to say a bit of sandcastle building or something. I could take my budgie smugglers and sit on the beach and make a few sandcastles. But yeah, that'd be a sight, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, fair comment, yeah. Well, if I lay face down, it'll probably be <laughs> all right, won't it? Kids can play on me, can't they? How do you, how's, how's this session going so far, mate? How, are you catching anything? I've had two really nice skimmers, one on corn, one on soft pellet across. Yep. I'm saying that me... Um, my lovely silverfish line, you'll catch everything on. Quickly filled up with small fish. And I'm just off end of, oh, that's one. I'm just off end of that island. End of your island. Yeah. You put me on bum end. Um, and I've got a bit of black zip flying out here, look. With. Not, you ain't got attention. I'm promoting this one to a bream. First, first two have been skimmers. Oh no, it's yeah. We're, that's a bream. We're bream. That. Oh aye. Yeah. Bit of corn. Hey, he's a nice fish, isn't he? Yeah. Beauty. So I'm just tapping in a few of them six mil expanders, which I did last night. I've got them in water here. Because that catches everything, doesn't it, Expander? Yeah. So there's a few carp, they'll come and eat it. The only time it's not good is when there's a lot of small skimmers and bits and bobs, because they'll just smash them to bits, don't they? But I think they certainly have a lot of pulling power and they catch everything. But I caught him on corn. What about you, Joe? Is it still good? Yeah, I'll tell you what, um, I'm feeding that, that ground bait and pellet mix, hardly anything, in a winter skimmer style -y, and it's quite good. But it's noticeable the fish are a lot smaller than them what you're just catching there. 
Yeah, they're more different. like, sh I'm saying these are shoulders, them ones. They're pellet fish, aren't they, these ones I'm catching? Oh yeah, definitely. Like two to the pound. Because you're trickling pellets in all the time, aren't you? Yeah, I'm feeding next to nothing. Yeah, which is, I'm trying to like dump and yeah, get I'm things fishing, down mate. and hold it to the bottom. I'm fishing really like dotted down, really precise. I've got a dropper three inches from the hook. I'm fishing proper. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna call it technical, but precise is what I'm gonna call it. I'm feeding next to nothing. I'm trying to catch one off my last feed as well. I'm not feeding. I'm trying to not feed as soon as I go in, which is difficult for me because I like to feed the bait. But yeah, quite often I'm getting a, a bite as soon as I drop in without feeding. So the last thing I want is to feed a load of bait and it just start fizzing and I can't catch them. So I'm being really cautious with my bait and it's working. The formula expander. The only thing I wish, I wish I had orange zip on, not white. A bit softer. Just something a bit softer. And yeah, this, this black's a bit fierce for uh, for these, but I was looking at them stick ups and thinking, yeah. do I want to be riving a rig through them when I've got tench pulling my elastic everywhere? But They've not rocked up yet, so. But one thing I will say is the water's actually quite clear. When you're fishing, it's quite clear, isn't it? And yeah. I, wish, I think yeah. that orange might just be a bit nicer, but. I've actually put my three meter defender in there, which is gray in color, and I can see it. So yeah, it's quite deceiving, really, that light. Yeah, it's like a milky color, isn't it, the lake? And then, oh, it's like the water's milky, but. It's actually clear. Yeah, the so clay, when you look on bank, the clay is grey. It's like real, proper clay. And that obviously, water f rubbing against bank with a bit of wind, colours it up. Fish, obviously the bottom's that colour as well. So fish are obviously disturbing that. That's what creates that milky colour. Yeah. But what looks coloured to us isn't always... No, I always think that like with the Grand Union Canal. When you look at the Grand Union Canal, it looks chocolate, but it's actually not. No. Fish can clearly find your bait, can't yeah. they? So they can see what they're doing. So I thought I've been having some nice matches, Mick. Well, that would be next uh, question. I've been having some nice matches, you know. You've got a cracking day's fishing to tell us about when we went... To the Glebe. To the Glebe, yeah. Yeah, David Hall Memorial, which that's, is... That's what we did in between. I know we'd been somewhere. We've been there as well, haven't we? Yeah. Tell you us had all a little about Glebe that, campaign, haven't you? You're the, man on, you're the man on there. And... Um, Obviously, I was at the. I worked for David All, well, Max Fishing Magazine, for close to 10 years. Yeah. And um, David All sadly lost his battle with cancer. And uh, every year we have the memorial match, which is a brilliant opportunity for people in the trade to get together and David, some of David's old friends and colleagues and employees and stuff. So it's, it's really nice because you get to see a load of old faces and there's people there that I only see at that match. Yeah. Every year. And uh, like you fished, Darren fished, it was, it was great. And I've been second, I was second in the match, but I've been second two other times as well, which is an absolute good time. Yeah, you make a lovely prize, mate, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, unbelievable. So I'm consistent, but I'm consistently second, which is very <laughs> annoying. But I had a lovely day, I drew peg 78 on pool five. And I've had a I've done a live match actually on my own YouTube and sort of had one of the matches where I caught a few short, caught a few long, caught a few on the feed. I wasn't, I was ticking over but never really going to win the match. So I've really forced it down the edge and it's one of those, sometimes when you force it down the edge it doesn't happen but it was one of those days where it did and I got the old blue zip cranked up. When you say force it, what do you mean? Because sometimes it, you've done a lot more of that kind of fishing yeah. than me, but sometimes when you, you know, when you it's, people know what I mean, it's like you're in a situation in a match, it's not going as you planned, and you think, well, I'll just fill it in down the edge, and if they come, they come; if they don't, they don't, and a lot of the times they don't. But so I've done that, I've attacked it, and it, it was one of those rare occasions where they did actually rock up. And what did you what did you feed down there? I was just feeding ground bait and dead maggots. Yeah. Positively, um, trying to be as aggressive as possible because I I felt like I was the only one in that area feeding any bait. The guys either side of me were being a bit more negative. They were fishing bomb and pellet and stuff. So it was played into my hands really because it meant that I could just win the fish. Um, 
and I just fed it really aggressive, big pot. I used the, the Preston paste pot as a cab pot and I was filling it up every go, even putting two on at times. Uh, two pots? Two pots, yeah. Double potting? And it worked a treat, either fishing 10 maggots on the hook or two worms. And it just worked a treat. And it was one of them days where well, I caught 130 pound in close to two hours, an hour and three quarters, which is some going, isn't it? That's a, pro that's a proper little yeah. spell. And it's not, and a great way to finish a match and all. Oh, I just love it. I love when, they, when they're in that edge and I just love the fishing like that. What have we got here? Is this a motorbike? Oh, it sounds like a quad to me. I'll tell you what it sounds quad, like. Quad, isn't it? Oh, it's it's the old, uh, what do they call them? All-terrain vehicles. All-terrain. It's an ATV. ATV. Yeah, not ITV. That's what we used to have on Yorkshire Tilly, weren't it? Sean's ATV, that is. So yeah, and I ended up with 186 pound and 192 won it, so I was gutted. Because it's one of them, minutes you come away thinking, if I'd have just had five more minutes. But, but then again, Jim would have caught another one. He'd have had another yeah, five so more, more minutes, yeah. I just. Do you think you did a note different, Joe? Or? Yeah, I should have set a waggler up. I should have fished a waggler. I fished the feeder across. Yeah. And I could get the fish in my peg, but I couldn't really catch them. They were colouring the water up, but I wasn't catching them. Because they were just backing off front feeder? Or? I just think the water was a bit clear on our lake and it, it was just a bit, it weren't quite right. Whereas I think if I'd have, what I would have done, would have put a big smooth hound on. Yeah. I'd have boshed five or six ground bait, feeders full of ground bait, and then spent 20 minutes chucking a waggler over it. And I think that would have caught me more fish than a feeder. Got you. Um, almost just picking them off really, because. They love noise in there. And I think that I'd have just caught another dozen carp on a waggler, I'm sure I would. Because you were attracting them, but not particularly yeah. catching them. Um, and that's it, really. I felt like I had my edge really good. Yeah, it sounds like it. 120 pound um, didn't last. I started short. I probably would have started on a long pole. What, short you started pole. short to nick a few at the beginning of yeah, match? Yeah, and I would have been better off just going straight on my long pole. Down, down, would that be down the middle? Yeah, 14 metres, it's yeah. a third of the way across, I'm saying. Um, but yeah, it was one of those matches, it was, felt like I'd done really well because I come back, but I could have I won, definitely could have won. So another, another near miss, unfortunately. What a and, cracking venue that is. Oh, if you, want, if you want your string pull, that's the place to go. Well, I can, I can vouch for that because we went, um, I'd forgot about that. I know there was something we'd done when I kept saying, well, we've been out filming and we've, we've been here and there and everywhere. And uh, we took Darren because that memorial match was like a bit of a corporate day for us, weren't it? That's yeah. What, that's from Colin. Anyway, that's my excuse for getting out of office. And um, Darren, which is my brother, uh, I think... He's like Neil Fisher's best kept secret, isn't he? Yeah, he he's is. our secret weapon. Secret weapon. He, um, he's the bloke that makes it all tick when we're uh, enjoying ourselves. While we're doing this, he's yeah. doing the hard work. Of course isn't he? he is. Of course he is. Um, and he's not uh, an expert fisherman, is he? He fishes now and again. Yep. For a little bit of peace and quiet, I'm going to say that's his. That's his reason for I'm going. Saying fishing. he's what ninety percent of the anglers in the world are. Yeah, no wrong with that. Well, I think we all started off fishing for various reasons where we finish up as anglers is a different story but and uh, so we took him down for a bit of a practice didn't we you um did a great video which we just released this yeah, week yesterday actually as we're filming this yeah Warts um, and all on managing your swim and timings and how to catch fish and when to catch them and you know what to do so have a look at that i'm not going to tell you what's on it have a look have a look for yourself and uh we took down for a bit of a day's fishing and it was tough quite tough uh, which your video will, will show but they rocked up in edge late on and i couldn't get him off bank actually i think <laughs> we finished up going at chippy for his tea because we were definitely weren't going to be on for for dinner i can assure you so we um and he had his blue zip all over the lake catching loads yeah. of big fish it's amazing isn't it so on the match all three of us rocked up, didn't we? Great breakfast, beautiful, great place. As you said, great to see some old faces. Robin Morley were there, weren't he, from Daiwa? Yeah. One of the uh, industry stalwarts. Um, good to see... Uh, David Preston, of course. Dave Preston were there. 
um, frustrated as hell. He drew pig two on pull one and said he had a pig full of fish, didn't know how to catch him. You match anglers are all crazy. Um, I want to just go and catch one great big one. Uh, we're, all, we're all different, aren't we? Bones here were on peg one, not seen him for ages. Clean as ever. Clean the cleanest man on the bank. Yeah, um, he's making a bit of a comeback. Um, and I drew peg, was it 13 on pool one? Yeah, I'm saying you couldn't have drawn any worse, Mick, if I'm honest. Well, you're not the only person to say that. Andy Findlay were at side of, uh, side of me when I drew one. And I've gone 13 and he went, ooh. I wouldn't fancy that, Mick. <laughs> and I, and is I that thought, your best fin impression, is it? He said it's rubbish there, and I thought, ah, it's Andy's dry, dry sense of humour. What he means, it's really good. And I went, really? He went, no, it's rubbish. And I seen <laughs> Lee and Rob Wooten, who were filming for their uh, channel, The Edge, and um, Rob went, fish for silvers. And I'm like, what? So I thought he would be in Sark, yeah? As he normally is. But he actually wasn't. No, what he meant were there's a there's a there's a separate pool. Yeah, there's a selfish prize. There's a selfish prize. I ain't gone for that, Joe. I were fully armed. I'd got blue and green elastic coming yeah, out. Yeah, you of wanted ears. blue zip all over the lake, didn't you? Yeah, I'd got a load of um I'd got a load of furies tied up, strong string, and a barrel full of pellets, and I wanted it to happen. And how did it go for you? I should have listened to what they said and fish for silvers <laughs> because I think you only needed forty odd pound for that. Um, I caught next to no, I caught I don't know seven carp or something. It was rock hard. Um, the only thing I will say about that, I do think the good carp pegs are the good bream pegs. Well, so fish, I don't even know if you'd have caught that many skimmers. <laughs> no, maybe not. But I probably would have had a day's fishing. Oh, you'd have had a day's um, fishing. You caught some lovely perch in Edge. Does that? I think that's just, there's a clue there, isn't there? Yeah. If you're catching perch in Edge when you're fishing for carp, there's no carp there. But I'm going on my hard pellets, mate. It was freezing cold, got wind in my chops. Last place I think fish wanted to be were in front of me. And if if you could get your pellets to where you wanted them by, you know, where you catch it, <laughs> your float were laid sideways. I had a 416s Fury on, and it were like, in, in tow, I might as well be on Trent. Um, Darren drew 98? I no, think. he drew 90. 90. D down at the bottom. Um, and funny enough, he was outside of Rob. As I said, Darren's not an expert fisherman. He had 30 odd pound, he caught a carp last chuck. He felt like he sorted it out. He felt the fish were slightly deeper, in a deeper margin. Yeah. Um, he got unlucky, Darren did, because yeah, it a wasn't bit. a short pole day, and really Darren's best chance was if it was short pole and edge. And it... Yeah, he's not a rod and reel angler, is he? No, he they didn't really come pole. on that five metre line for anyone. Yeah. And, and Robert Sider, him, has only weighed 71 pound, and obviously he's had the advantage of a rod and reel, and Darren not fishing a rod and reel, so kind of tells you it were a bit tough. So what I'm saying, Joe, is that at our corporate day, um, you can draw pegs for everybody next year. <laughs> That's what I took away from it, That's but beautiful away. fishery. Um, I did say to Lee on the way there, I draw set absolutely sensational. Is that your venue you, for, for drawing? Is that what we reckon? No, just in general, I just draw really well. Oh, so, sorry, in, in general? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's Yeah, I try odd. not to mess around on baddens. Although, my next match after, last week at Barbie Banks, I drew terrible, which goes against everything I'm saying. I think you'd like to remember the good pegs and forget the bad pegs. Yeah, Which I tried. is probably why you think you you probably think you draw right because you've you what you've done is you've erased all the bad pegs out of your mind, all the rubbish. Yes, I, that that was it then. I had the glebe and then it's back onto my local um, midweek opens at the minute and went to Barbie Banks last week, which is speaking of match fishing magazine is where we used to test all the tackle. All right. Um, you know, whenever we had a pole to test, it was five minutes from the office and it was a. Beautiful snake lake full of carp, and it was a perfect place. And despite fishing there dozens of times, I rarely ever match fished it. So I had a Tuesday the other week, and I went and I really I drew in a really tough little bit, like a little little bowl all in its own. Peg 56 for those who know it, and um, a bit like I'm fishing now, actually. Just fished hard pellets across, feeding really cagey. 
rattling a few in. And actually, yeah, and I had 79 pounds, which was fourth, but it, it was a lovely day's fishing. I had like 30 odd carp, it was really good. <laughs> and it what, just. What did you weigh for that? 79 pounds. 79. Which, I was never going to ah, win so the you've match. You've been busy. Yeah, I was never going to win the match from that peg, but by just doing, you know, fishing it really negative and taking what came, I actually had a really good day. And I think a lot of us, you can't win the match from every peg, can you? Oh, no, it's impossible. But you can win your money back, maybe a section, a low frame from a lot of pegs. So rather than me just sulking and filling it in like I was on about earlier, I've just eased my way through the five hours and taken what the pegs give me. And I think that's a big lesson for a lot of people. Like, Great, yeah. innit? You see, like these people, like oh, he wins on the pace every week, or what? He's just a shallow man, but some pegs just don't don't lend themselves. For Sometimes that, don't it don't work. A bit like what I've just said about the glebe. Yep. Where obviously I've gone shoulders back, head down. I want to break record. I want my string pulling. I want to catch a lot of carp, and I fish really positively. But you're just on a peg that isn't going to do it. Pointless, really. Um, I had uh, David from DHP to my left, who's fished. Un, you know, somebody said to him, best way to attack that peg is lose feed pellet and fish a bomb down the middle. And he's done that and just put his rod at rest and every now and then he's got dragged in. Yep. He had £70 pound and yep. he's had a better day's fishing than I've had because he's probably set his sights a lot lower and accepted He's fished he's for what the peg's going to give him, hasn't he? Yeah, of course he has. Of course he has. I'll tell you aye, what. Aye, aye. We've got, we've we've got, got a visitor. Got the... I'll, tell, I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you what, Sean. No, it's perfect because... We were just talking about the hospitality that we're receiving already here at Bishop's Bowl. Should we have a chat about Bishop's Bowl? And that proves it. Look I'm going to come round, hang on. Oh. I couldn't have made that better myself. Hang on, I'll come over. I'll come over there. Yeah. I don't know. It's about just going a bit of a pullback, isn't it? Hmm. I'll tell you what this could be. A road cart, Nick. Huh. Oh, see what it is now. Off, off, gone. <laughs> there you were, gone. Oh. How disappointing. What happened there then? I think it was foul up. Could have been. Could have been a foul up green, that. Mm. What do you reckon? Possibly. Could have Possibly, been. Possibly, yeah. So it did take it on the old uh, settle up. It did, didn't it? Might have just gone past his nose end, that one. Can we talk about what we're doing? It's been quite tricky, hasn't it? Well, I've come up because <clears throat> obviously I've fed that natural baits in my deep water. Yeah. Um, casters, casters few worms. worms, bit of corn. Thinking I'm going to catch an odd tench and bream, and and I've had one big skimmer off it, prick one, and that's come off. And then on my expander line, which I've put one down some reeds um, <clears throat> and corn, CLM. and then one off that Gilligan's Island. What is it? Gilligan's Island. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other end of your island, there's me, isn't there? And I've had three bream off that, and I'm nice catching skinners. a few fish. Not, yeah, not really. Oh, no, I feel like it's completely wrong, and you're getting a few fish. Um, so I'm like, right, what's what's going on? And it looks like frugal feeding yeah, it seems to be the... Or what? I've done a lot of this sort of fishing over the years, and... Commercial skimmers are like totally different beasts, aren't they? To yeah, yeah, yeah. Natural, oh, yeah. Uh, natural water fish. They're mm. like, if you put any amount of bait in, there's obviously an odd exception, but meat fishing and such. But if you put any amount of pellets in, especially, they're just, they just can be horrible to catch. And yeah, they're that's in your especially true for them, them little ones. Little skimmers are a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I'd have thought with it, with which warmer now. Uh, I know we always said it was mm. cold this morning, but <clears throat> water's warm, isn't it? Yeah, but I, I don't think, think they'd be chomping yeah, and chewing. And I don't think it has any effect because I feed like this in the winter. I feed like it in the summer. It's not. Mm. It's not about that. I think it's the bottom of the lake that's the problem. I think they get rooting around in the silt and stuff, and I just don't think they can either. Can't find your bait. Something goes on. Mm. So by feeding, feeding next to nothing. View. What is it you put in there? Microbes. I've I just mixed up. I mixed up some thatchers mm -hmm. next to none. Yep. And I've gone a third thatchers and two thirds pellets. Um, and like a stodge? Yeah, and like a stodge, like a bit of a... So it goes down and I'm literally feeding. Oh. It's, it's not even a thumbnail, is it? It's, yeah. No, that's, no, 
do not call them our thumbnail, so it's not. Is it a not... pea? Yeah, it's, it's a bit big, big. Like a marble of, of a marble. mix. And I'm trying to do it after every, it. every fish. Oh, that's one. Uh, yeah, after every fish, I'm just trying to dink a little marble in. But even like so when you're starving them onto hook. Starving them onto hook, and like the next chuck, I'll try for a minute or so before even dropping my bait in. Because quite often that last ball, even though I've caught this one off it, will still be enough to catch another one. It's weird. Mm. Okay, I mean, that's a nice sort of 12 ounce skimmer. Yeah. Right in the top lip. Yeah, just great. Yeah, expander at hook. Yeah, just an expander. I've got um, what, a four mil? Just a little four mil expander. I've got a size 16 on, I 11. Got a little number 10 there, sort of three inches from the hook. I can mm -hmm. move that. If I'm yeah. not seeing my bites, I'll put it really close. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to do that. Uh, I'll put it really close. Yeah, a little it's on my hook indicator length. Indicator shot, yeah. Which people seem to be worried about putting shot on hook length, but if you put a stop on there, it doesn't do any damage at all. And So you always leave your um, float needing another shot? <clears throat> for this sort of fishing, yeah. Just, or you just ping one off just from ping, above? Yeah, ping one off from above, and then I've just got number nines above that, like, a bit staggered, so it's all a bit nice and, and tight. That's a ten. That's a ten, yeah. Yeah. You could have a nine there. I don't think it might. I think it's as long as it registers. And it's funny. It's very easy. Warm weather, catching loads of fish everywhere we go, and you come here a bit gung ho, and it's completely wrong. Yeah, and it, it's just like, like you know, I've just eased my way along doing this, and I've caught not every chuck, but most chuck. In the winter style, it's I've caught some here, and and at the end I'll have a nice net of fish, but it's, yeah. It's amazing how little you can feed with these skimmers when pellet fishing. I say I think when you cast a fishing, meat fishing, it's probably a bit different. But for pellets, I'm, I'm not well, even going to feed so this strong, time. Do you reckon the, the, the attraction of them is so much? Who knows? So that, I reckon that tens on the bottom now. Oh, you're right. There it is. It just settled up. I say it's borderline. That is. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm not going to feed. You'll probably get a lift by now. For a little bit, I'm just gonna. Everything's obviously dotted down right to, yeah, yeah. to the nth degree. And... So as soon as it picks up your expander. Yeah, you're trying to see it. Yeah, it, magnif it kind of magnifies it. Well, you've got, it. your shot's got to do the work for you on this because the bait's so light, there's nothing to register. No. It's not like and a piece of worm up. or paste or whatever where. As soon as a fish picks it up, you know about it because it's affecting how he floats it. So with an expander, that doesn't happen. So you need the shot to do the work for you. Yeah. Does that make sense? Hundred percent. And I always think that the way that the yeah, mouth, um, you're actually just sticking that into the bottom of your pot, aren't you? Almost like yeah. wedging it wedging against the side of the pot. Yeah. Because if I can, if I can catch one without dropping another ball in, I will do. Yeah. See that? Look, look at that. Look. Oh. There you go. That's, that's a catch. That's a catch. Fry. What I'm calling that? that, I'm calling it a fry. What, is, what even is that? Um, Baby it looks rice. like a pellet with fry hanging out of its <laughs> backside. <laughs> you don't need to worry about that I one, said, do Where did you get that from? The pellet said, ah, oh, yeah, there's loads of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, what I'm going to say is that <laughs> I've got to say, I mean, I spent a bit of time pellet fishing this winter at Allcroft. Really enjoyed it, did quite well. Um, and it's funny, I've come into beast mode. Um, I'm going to empty it and catch all the fish and I'm feeding <clears throat> six mil expanders to feed all little ones off. <laughs> and it's completely wrong. Um, but what I'm going to say is that I think the way they pick it up, so like a maggot or a caster mm. or a worm, they take it into the back of the throat, yeah. crush it, kill it eat it, kill, kill it, it. Yeah. Um, pop it, whereas the expander's soft and I think they just hold it in the mouth. So they pick it up, they've got it, they don't really have to do anything with it. Right. And they can blow it back out again, in and out, blow it in and out. I so you need it, to be super uh, sensitive and use your, like you said, use your shot. Shot's to... got to do a lot of the work for you. Mm, mm. Them little skimmers, hand sized skimmers, are some of the hardest fish to catch. Yeah. And um, and it's not because they don't eat, it's because you, they don't register on the float. They're so gentle, aren't they? So, yeah, yeah. So when they're feeding, they barely move your rig, they're very slow. They don't move. They don't move. So. No. You, everything you, you got to stack the odds in your favour. You yeah, roach, you're going to bite like that, you float sails away because the roach is swimming off or... You, you might not remember it, but I do because I won loads of matches. Can you remember the hook in the loop? Yeah, you of course I do. That? Yes, yes. So it's something for anyone who hasn't seen it. Giles Cochrane, back in the day, developed a way of catching F1s where he put an eye duck in a loop mm. and then fished with two number eights, one inch above the loop. So the hook was free moving in the loop 
Two number eights directly above it, an inch above it. Ooh. Not a bad thing. Mm. Um, and it looks all wrong. See, so so those anglers are natural anglers. It looks horrendous because you shot so close, you're like, yeah. that's just horrendous. Because we like to lick a bit of line up bottom. Yeah, or let catch them on the it, fall. Let it take it. Don't strike yet, young in. Let it go, let it yeah. go. Don't strike, and this was don't all strike, yeah. the opposite to that. Because of the way that they feed. And I remember top anglers used to scoff at it because it was like, oh, what? that's nonsense. But I'm telling you now, I caught so many fish with that on the quiet. Did you? Yeah, F1s, it's, it's amazing. That there's not as much expander pellet fishing for F1s nowadays. But so as soon as it moves? As soon as it moves. And i tell you what you used to catch even more of, dinners. And I'm sure it's just because you could see the bites. Yeah. Whereas, you know. Yeah. When we're fishing, even with a shot six inches away, with them little skimmers, you might not even see the bite. You know, and as feedy, you don't catch them, do you? No, no, you don't catch them, but they've had it in, in the mouth. Yeah, of course they have. Yeah, and I'm using all craft example. This winter, fish there with a pole, and 30 odd pound, yeah. 30 odd pound, 30 odd pound, 20 odd pound on a bad day. Dink, pellets, tap, lovely, little indication, almost like a dither, lift up, there's one on. One on, yeah. Lift bites, dinks, blah, blah, blah. Took a feeder in, follow it, because it were alternate weekends, and you'd sit there and it probably had 10 bites, and it never moved. It's funny. It's got to move all that line, which yeah. it doesn't. Because you don't get that on a pellet, it just goes didn't didn't like that. It's so, funny because obviously, uh, like the commercial skimmery fishing, is really sort of you know a lot of people doing that, and it's funny because the really good F1 anglers have just picked it up like that, and it's because they understand that having the shot close to the hook mm. registers the bite. So your Andy Bennett's and your Jamies and that, they've not to like go no, no, through that. To oh, I need there. to put line on the bottom, feed a load of bait. No, they've got to learn but the those natural anglers have had to. They, they just go and fish with it with that, that mindset. Of yeah, the that's how they fish. Shot close to the hook and all that, and he's, for these fish, it's dead right. And to be fair, it's a difficult day today, but we've managed to keep a few, mm. a few going. So what's uh, what's next on the agenda then, Mick? So I'm off to Tamar for Tamar. Westfest um, this weekend. Um, I'm getting a bit kit ready, but I'm going to call. I'm actually be passing Carmel down on Sunday. <clears throat> to visit some, some friends Saturday night. So on way back I'll call in and see Feeder Masters qualifying round at Carmel because we've got a Super League there. Mm -hmm. It'll be in two weeks uh, a Saturday. That's a good venue, isn't it, Carmel? Great venue. It's um, It's got loads of fish in it, but it's a bag of tricks. It's got loads of different depths around the lake and therefore you get different sized fish. So down the road they catch the little skimmers, on the point uh, on sunnies they catch these big bream uh, some places bottom's not very good close in like the sun is and round to its left and then all of a sudden you go up into that other arm and that's like flat and silty you've really got to have your wits about it that's quite shallow there it's a bag of tricks i like that yeah it? it is a bag of tricks you've got to be switched on think about the job weigh it up fish on the day with weight up on the day yeah fishing yeah. peg because if the fish in the shallow water i remember once you know that was a super league i drew early numbers and I drew quite a deep peg I want to say nine or ten or something like that on point and I know for a fact because we'd had a practice match today before all the fish were in shallow water and I caught three bream there because that was the only place I could find mm. a count right of three there. I were underhanding on the feeder and caught some bream you don't we don't fish like that but I if, right I cast, that if I actually made over and cast, I was in too deep of water. <clears throat> so we've got that coming up. I'll call on there on Sunday, see them. Dave Rigby's running match. Um, and then it's off to... Um, Tamar. Tamar, the, the weekend after. For a bit of West Festing. Yeah, there's that qualifier uh, on the Sunday, and then it goes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, four day. Went last year. I think I first one out of the frame last year. Um, I don't know if he paid nine hour tenth or he paid eight and hour ninth, whatever. That'll be good fishing, won't it? Fantastic. Year before, we're brilliant. Um, I think we're fourth or fifth, can't remember. Um, me and Lee went last two years. Both, I think we both framed two years ago. Lee were in mud eight hour at first start last year. And then we're talking about, I think, two years ago, because <clears throat> I'd won the Feeder Masters qualifier on the Sunday, £44. I remember that. I had. £40 the next day, £35 the day after, £42 the day after. <laughs> it, it Ridiculous. Yeah. Um, Which is at that venue to a tee, isn't it? If you yeah, get, it, yeah. get it right in yeah. good condition. Yeah, it's brilliant. There's obviously skimmers are the 
main species. I mean, last year, um, I drew in this, it's a bit of a cutback bay on fire bank, and it's a bit of a tricky thing, it's a bit silty. And I mown black a drain all day. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the, the point, there's like four or five pegs on the first point, uh, sorry, that were the first point in, in that particular festival. <clears throat> Lee won the day with six dog pound, fish to blinder out on this point. It went 40 odd, 40 odd. There might have been a 50 there, 40 odd. And then I'm back in this thing. Um, whinge, whinge bag. Uh, Des, shit were to my left. Is that speaking of whinge bags? Yeah, talking of whinges. Um, he it, broke it, my room, didn't it? Oh, sorry, I thought he meant Des. Well, he did, <laughs> both. Um, and I know we're on to an adding to note. Des, I think, weighed 50 pound, and I thought, this is ridiculous. Scales have come. I'm like, mm, mm, morning like a good one. Took 40 pound on scales, <laughs> having caught nothing, nothing all day. Caught now. Yeah, weren't competing. I were never going to compete. But it's they just an amazing kept, day. Just kept dumping fish in there, going, mm, rubbish here. Um, can't compete, can't compete. And I couldn't, because it's a weight match. And, uh, and weighed 40 pound. So I can't wait to get there. And then All that be out and out skimming, mate. Uh, yeah, it's a bit early for roach, although I have caught them. Um, I'd say that's one of the few venues where they feed all the time, don't they? Like? Yeah, I have caught them before. I drew, and it's, that's all about depths. And I think that day when I had 40 pounds, I caught a few, but they were hard to keep. Um, skimmers to win, though, innit? If you're going to win the festival, you need to catch skimmers every day. Yeah. Um, if you had a really bad day and you drew on a load of roach and caught 30 pounds, that might be a good bad day. But you've Personally, I think to win it, you've got to catch skimmers and have a. You need a mega day in there as well. <clears throat> and there's an odd peg on an odd rotation, and it's all wind orientated because there's some top class anglers there who can fish like hell. They know the venue, they've been before, so there's no gimmies. You're not going to go and fish your way through, you've got to fish like mad and draw even better yeah. uh, to win. However, if you went every year and you come top three, it's probably because you didn't have the right rotation or the right pegs. You'll have had a fantastic week fishing. Can't wait for that. And it's great to uh, sort of knock this dust off uh, ready for when you go back in September for the final. And then we're back for a week. So and is a is bit. it World Champs then? Yeah, I'll, I won't be going fishing then. Um, started doing a bit of prep, starting to tie hooks. <clears throat> but then the bigger kit, so rods and reels and yeah. And I'll transfer obviously into my new Dren and luggage and things like that. Ah, new sponsor, new yeah, time. Get all that ready. Um, prepare for, for Serbia. So we drive into to Serbia, which will be the end of. Wow, don't, don't time Not fly. Long. We're actually leaving the 28th of June, I think. Um, so that's not long, is it? It's nice. It's just first of June, first of June today. today, yeah. How's that crept um, up on you? Well, you look at your calendar on you in January and you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, World Champs are in July. Well, here we are. May were yesterday and in four <laughs> weeks' time, we'll be jumping in the van. I'll be picking Will Freeman up. Aren't we? How long, what, what kind world. of a drive is that then? Um, two and a half days, really. Two and a half days. Yeah, if you're a madman and you wanted to have your eyes on stalks and matchsticks in your eyelids, you could probably do it in two days. But to be safe, realistic, and give yourself a good chance, I mean, obviously, I live in the north, call them swing by Suffolk and pick Will up. Every single swing by every single world <laughs> championships is Will's place is on the way, he says. Um I'll pick him up, swing by there, pick swing him by. up. Then we'll fire across on the tunnel, do a bit of driving that evening, <clears throat> get his head down for night, uh, somewhere Belgiumish, um good night's kip, up at the crack of dawn. Smash hell out of the journey, get the big bulk of it done. Um, so the, land, the whole process pest. is like a two week away, is it? Well, yeah, because you because you spend three days travelling. Well, you wake up on that Wednesday morning. I think we're setting off Wednesday morning. You'll so you've got to be done and ready Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. So you're losing Tuesday. Oh look at that. Um, you know, been all work that day. Wednesday. Or should I say no office visits, drinking tea. <laughs> drinking um, lemon drizzle. Wednesday, you'll be like, transfer this packed stuff into the van, set off, mosey on down to Will's, 
that night. He'll be in Belgium. That's a good word, isn't it? Moors, no, no. yeah. Thursday. See what I'm doing. I'm going to go to that island to finish our video. Beautiful. Off. Head, uh, head down to um, Budapest, where we'll stay overnight. Oh, but head down. Um, pick a uh, pick a bit of ground bait up front where. Um, See, my me, me is so just a disturb you. My pallet's going chilled. back shoes. Yeah, Which is a sign that them little roads have been chewing it. Yeah, they, they break it up, don't they? They, they chomp it, don't it, bro? Is that 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 skimmer's been swimming around all day, hasn't it? It's either feeling sorry for itself or it's lost. <laughs> That's in my opinion, it must be lost. So you basically. Yeah, and then we'll have a long down old Serbia session, from, isn't it? From Budapest. And it all sounds romantic and uh, exciting and wow, Which that is. must be great. But that's graft, and then settle into camp, get everything um, ready, get acclimatised, and then the following Monday, because so you'll probably have Friday tea time, Saturday unload, might even go and fish off the length somewhere, mm -hmm. get a feel for it, and Sunday start, you know, getting your kit ready, so that you hit the ground running on. So obviously, I, Monday I, morning. I spent like a my old childhood following the England teams and mm. that big practicing off the length always used to be a big deal, yet it's not something you'd do so much, is it? <sighs> no, it's... It can be very misleading, that, can't it's it? It's interesting, yeah, because ultimately, off the length, it's in the, the closing the title, isn't it? Mm. Um, no pressure. You know as well as I do that the totally Joyce species, is not the same yeah. as off the length, which a bit other side of Gunthorpe Weir. Yeah. Um, chubbed down there and... And roach and there you're breaming roach and it's not the same thing so other than getting a feel for the place yeah, you're not really seeing anything i actually think it's it's about ranging your van right that lives there because of course your van will be full to the top you won't be able to get a fag paper in top yeah and you've got riddles these... fridges kit clothing extra luggage backup stock all your uptime equipment getting familiar Sp with the roads and where you roads, are everything and... yeah so it'd be like unload the van strip it all out then repack it as though you were off for a day's fishing and have a drive down to the venue go all oh, right that bank's a bit steeper than i thought right change the legs on your platform right i'm going to need that there going to need this there ah oh, wind's a bit like that make sure we put his brollies up keep keep your bait safe blah 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 just that, and that's kind of what i mean by acclimatize which people probably think i mean weather you're not getting acclimatized to weather it'd be red hot could be 40 degrees, so you're just going to sweat from start to finish. Um, but it's not a fashion parade, it's a fishing match, so you just get on with it, get your hat on, get your cream on, nice white shirts, and uh, get on with it. And then get marching and see if we can any, sort of Any venue. sort of, you've obviously done your homework, you've spoke to some people, any like clues as to what you're fishing for or anything like that? The thing is, the word I'm going to use, it's going to be hard, it's going to be tough. There's going to be skimmers. Um, as there is in that part of the world, there'll be an odd catfish, the, little, catfish the little green ones, pass on shot if you want to call them that. Um, there'll be some carassios. Will so, they be your bonus fish? I think, yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, and they'll be, they'll be tricky as they always are, but they might be odd ones, and but they're never really big, you know, a pound, two pounds massive. So, no uh, carp or anything like that, it doesn't sound like no, it doesn't sound like there's going to be any of them. And then there'll be these Danubian skimmers, which... What? We, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, there's... Uh, there's more than one? Oh, yeah, there's... You, you'll believe it. Um, and these things are got, like, a rud-style mouth, so they feed off bottom. They're, like, real thin, uh, big pointed t t fins on them. Look like a skimmer, but extended fins, and the mouths are upwards because they feed off bottom like a rud does. Yeah. And you'll catch them on drops so, or... We, we saw them last time, so hopefully they'll be there. The catfish were a banker last time, but they shut shop on us. And so is this a different venue to your fish before? Yeah, yeah. but... Very similar. If you can just try and imagine Danube, river that runs right from Holland all the way through to the Black Sea, when it goes through Serbia, it's it's big. It's, uh, yeah. it's big and it's wide and it's fierce. And then off that are the shipping channels, or we call them canals, um, I've heard it's up to 70 metres wide in some places, oh, right. but it, it could be 45, 50 metres, generally. Um, and the man-made channels to allow boats to come off the Danube into the cities. Mm -hmm. So it's a trunk venue, if you like, a bit like the Aaron Calder Canal. Yeah. 
Uh, a bit featureless, uh, although I've seen some photographs of the few trees knocking about, but the last time we went, or the last... Uh, like concrete and yeah, sterile. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah. But ultimately, Joe, you you get into it, it becomes your home. Yep. Um, you get absolved in it, and whether it were fishing for a pound or £100... Yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter, does it? Matters not. It's how do I catch more than the people I'm competing against? Yeah. So it could be really tough, it could be a few uh, catfish, it could be skimmers, it could be crasso, it could be great, but I'm told that it's not going to be great. But we'll have tons and tons of kit, loads of experience. I'm fishing with best five feed wranglers on the planet, uh, m fantastic management team, Dean's heading up, obviously his manager, and, well, it's there to be one, isn't it? So well, having seen it last year, first hand, it's, uh, mm. you know, as long as the venue suits, yeah, there's no reason why you can't do it. No, the gold. set off marching, you get your beat right, get everything right, all falls into place. Because you're competing against some great anglers, the other teams are fantastic, they all work hard. Then, you know, don't make no mistake, because um, they look different and they fish different. Yeah, I, to us. I got, a, I've, I, I don't know why it should be a shot because I've seen it before, I've been to England a few times, but mm. not the feeder one. And mm. you see the, the guys from the other nations and they fish different, they cast different, they've got yeah. different techniques. Mm. Ultimately, they work really well as a team. They feed a fish all year round to them rules. Put it in fish in net. They're fantastic at it. Yeah, and brilliant. they fish really light and they fish different. Yeah, completely different And they catch us. loads of fish. Mm. And it, I was coming away thinking, yeah, that's a really, really, really hard challenge that is now to win a, big task. win a medal at that game. Big task. It is not, there's no gimmies. None at all, as it proved uh, and as proved recently. Um, I think we showed the other nations quite a lot when we started. You know, it took us a bit of bit of time to get the hang of it because mm. it were about fishing feeder fishing on the world champs <laughs> and it's well documented that it's not quite the same as going to Southfield or Ferry Meadows it's different ball game different climate different fish different techniques different temperatures and all the rest of it <clears throat> but once we got into it people are quick to learn aren't they so we're now competing against experienced um, successful established yeah. hard working and as you rightly said, guys that do this week in, week out. Yeah. So, but we'll see, we'll see. So, that's that's July, but maybe we'll slide a little, a little vlog in before in. we go. I think so, I think we can get yeah. get, get, get one in. Hmm. Um, I'll tell you what I am looking forward to, this spawning game finishing. Because I think we've been unlucky the last two vlogs, haven't we? Yeah. They were spawning at Packington. Yeah. And the fish have just finished here because the, they all look like they've been through a bar yeah, fight, don't they? they're not quite ready yet, are they? No, it's a funny time here, Joe. Takes, takes um, fish time to settle down. Yeah. I think I was saying it the other day about really warm. Fish get sun on the back, it's been great. And then they have other things on the mind. It'll pass. Yeah. It'll pass. It's always a tough time here, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. I'm making lots of excuses, but ultimately I've caught quite a lot of fish today. Yeah, and nice. it's a nice place to do it. Beautiful. Do you end it there then? I think that's us and we'll uh, we'll see him next time. Won't Hopefully we? by the time uh, next week or so you'll start seeing the old kit markers drifting into shops. Ah, Is that true? Yeah, yeah well we'll certainly be sending our number one uh, sales force or single handed sales Army of force. one. Yeah, uh, Phil Cannon will be out showing people, showing the shops and they'll be stocking them and we'll probably get them out in the next hang on, hang on, hang few on, weeks. Hang on, hang on, hang on, this could end in tears, couldn't it? Oh, I hope you're dobbing. Oh, oh. Could end in tears. Mm. Could be elastic from here to Kingdom come here. Well, I, tried to, <laughs> I tried to do it earlier and it ended really badly for me. Lost uh, a lot. Ge ge geared up was a bad job. <laughs> Brilliant. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's us. us. We've had a good, a good month. Yeah. You've great had a month. great month. Yeah. I've had a good month. Everyone, happy, thanks everyone for watching the last one. That was really well received. Yeah, it was. And, uh, oh. Bye. Yeah, let's see if we can't put a few more fish in there. So thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you again on the next one. Brilliant.